Hey everyone, this is Nick, and today we're taking a look at Chrome OS Flex, the install it anywhere you want OS for people who want a full Google experience. So it's based on Linux, it has quite a nice user interface, and it has evolved past its it's only web apps roots. So I installed it on a spare laptop, but while on the surface it might look like a good option, when you start digging, you'll notice that there's basically no reason at all to go with Chrome OS Flex instead of any Linux distribution. So let's take a look at this thing and see why it's basically mediocre. Unlike today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Linode. Linode is the only solution I use to run my own Nextcloud server and my only Office server as well. It's a super easy solution to deploy basically anything you want in one click. They have a huge marketplace of applications you can host, from Nextcloud, WordPress, Drupal, GitLab, or Grafana, to gaming servers for Minecraft, Arc, CSGO, Rust, Valheim, and more. They take care of all the configuration for you. All you have to do is click the thing you want to deploy, fill in a few details, and your server is up and running. And once everything is live, it's still super easy to manage your servers, to upgrade or downgrade them, add some storage, back them up, and get help if you're stuck. I've been using Linode for years now, and I can only recommend them. If you want to give them a shot, click the link in the description below, and you'll get $100 of free credit to get started. Okay, let's go over the install process quickly. To install Chrome OS Flex, you will first need to give Google a bunch of personal information before you can access the help pages that tell you how to do it. To install it, you need to use anything based on Chromium. Install a Chromebook recovery extension, launch it, select Chrome OS Flex as the manufacturer and the device model, and this will let you create a USB drive to install from. Instead of providing an ISO and a small utility you could use from anywhere, not a web browser, they decided to make it way more difficult than it needed to be. And also, it only works from macOS and Windows. If you're using Linux, they will tell you to download a script to make it executable, to run it using the command line, and then parse through a list of more than 400 models to find Chrome OS Flex and enter its model number, which isn't even on the list. But if you look online, you'll find a link to a .bin disk image that you can flash using any USB drive creation tool. So they made the USB flashing process even harder than it actually needs to be. Good job. Now, apart from that, the install process was super simple. I just slapped it on my Slimbook Pro X14. Everything worked out of the box except some function keys that didn't do the thing that the label said they would do. But that's about it. Okay, now let's take a look at the user interface for Chrome OS, because Chrome OS Flex uses the same desktop environment, let's call it, as the regular Chrome OS. So let's see if it's actually any good. The interface is extremely simple. You have a basic bottom bar with a main menu and a search field at the far left, app icons that also serve as a taskbar in the middle, and a calendar and system menu on the right. If you have something playing in an app, you also get a media indicator next to the calendar to let you control playback. Now, by default, everything was way too big. This laptop I'm running Chrome OS on has a 1920 by 1080 display. And for some reason, the 100% scaling setting makes everything huge. You can change that, but I had to put it to 80% for it to actually look like the native resolution. Now you cannot change anything apart from the wallpaper and the position of that taskbar. Bottom, left or right, there is no top option and you also have access to a dark mode. The rest of the interface is super easy to use. You press the super key to open the menu, you type to search or you just click on the icon you want. You can click an app's icon to minimize it to the taskbar. You can reorder icons on that bar, you can add them through drag and drop or remove them by dragging them out, and you have the ability to tile windows just by dragging them to a screen edge, including maximizing a window by dragging it to the top, although for some reason there's a delay there before it actually does it. Now still, already, window management is better than macOS. You have touchpad gestures with a three-finger swipe up to display an overview of all your windows and virtual desktops, 
and four finger swipes left or right to switch between desktops. Now, while this last one is a one-to-one -one gesture where stuff moves with your fingers, the overview gesture isn't and doesn't feel responsive as a result. Stuff only moves when you finish the gesture, not as you perform it. The windows use the Windows button layout on the right-hand side with Minimize, Maximize and Close, plus a menu to interact with the window itself. You can run any web app from the Chrome Web Store, which has a lot of stuff. You can add any website as a shortcut that will appear in the main menu and be usable as an app, or you can enable the Linux development environment from the settings. It gives you a Debian container with access to basic repos, but you can install Flatpak, add Flathub, and run anything you'd like. Although since it's a container, some stuff won't work, like OBS, for example. You'll also have to use the command line, at least to get a graphical app store installed. But it's not that tricky to get access to stuff, even though there is a performance penalty that you will definitely feel in most applications. All in all, the desktop is really nice. You've got subtle understated animations, use of frosted glass blur. It's quite pretty, but then the issues start to appear. First, the killer feature for Chrome OS is that it has its own Android container that runs any Android app really well with great performance. And it means that Chromebooks can have a large catalog of apps that aren't widely available on Linux distros. Even Windows can't match that. While you can get some Android apps running on Windows 11, they're from the Amazon App Store, which is very limited. Chrome OS has access to virtually the whole Google Play Store, which is a lot better. And Linux? Well, don't tell me that Linux has WayDroid, because first, it's super convoluted to install and use, and second, it has access to individual APKs, no store to install anything. It's just not a solution. But anyways, the point is moot, because Chrome OS Flex cannot do that. It doesn't have access to Android apps, which is a big bummer. Now, you obviously won't get firmware updates directly from Chrome OS Flex. It also doesn't support running Windows VMs with Parallels Desktop, something that Chrome OS can do natively on Chromebooks, and the Linux development environment isn't available to all devices. Now, finally, some ports might not work, including Thunderbolt, which will be treated as USB 3, fingerprint readers, CD and DVD drives, or even styluses won't work. Now, whether Google will add support for any of this to Chrome OS Flex, I do not know. Probably Google doesn't even know either. Maybe they will kill off Chrome OS Flex before they even think of adding that support. I mean, it's been out for a few months now, so it must start to feel the icy grip of death. Then we have more factual UX-based problems, like the window inconsistencies. Chrome OS uses web apps and passes them for desktop applications. Now, honestly, everything is fast and responsive, and I don't really have an issue with that. The problem is, not all apps are treated in the same way. Opening YouTube or the file manager brings a window that looks like an application, a short title bar and standard controls. But if I open Google Drive, then I get a browser window with a URL bar, tabs, and a different title bar. Then, if I open Google Sheets, I don't get a separate application window. It opens in a tab inside of the Google Drive window, so I don't get an app icon in the taskbar for Google Sheets. But if I already had a Google Sheets icon in the taskbar, then it shows as if there's a Google Sheet window open and clicking it focuses the tab inside of the Google Drive window, or even minimizes the whole window with all its tabs. It's completely illegible. You never know what to expect when you run a new application. Will it open in a window or in a browser tab? And in that case, in which other browser window will it appear? Is it minimized? Is it visible? It's just a mess. And you will also get multiple indicators in the taskbar for a single window. For example, if I have one window with a Google Drive tab and a Google Sheets tab, I have three indicators, one for Chrome, one for Google Drive, one for Google Sheets. Clicking on any of these focuses the same window but with a different tab and sometimes will minimize the whole browser window with all its apps. So I have three indicators, but I only have two apps running and only one window. It's a nightmare. Then you have that atrocious visual aid when resizing a window. As your mouse pointer gets towards a window's side, you get this black bar that appears around that side. 
but the mouse pointer already changes into a resizing cursor, so it serves no purpose, apart from being distracting when you move your mouse around, or as you're aiming for the title bar to move the window. Oh yeah, that's another problem. Moving windows around sucks. See, the theme is either completely white or dark. The title bar merges with the header or the toolbar, except you can only drag a window from its title bar, and you don't know exactly where it starts or ends, because the title bar doesn't show a window title, just buttons. And you cannot press super or alt while dragging anywhere on the window to move it either, which means you're constantly trying to aim for a 20 pixel or so zone to move anything. And then there's the settings. Oh my, the settings. They're all displayed in a single page with a sidebar. Clicking the sidebar moves you to the relevant section of that single settings page. Moves you, not scrolls you. So you don't immediately realize that it's a single page. It's a small nitpick, but yeah, it's bad. Except that if you scroll yourself, the sidebar selected item doesn't change. So the sidebar is now telling me I'm in the accessibility settings when I'm looking at the network settings. Pretty bad design. None of the settings apart from the network have icons. So navigating them is hard since you have no visual aid. You just have row upon row of settings with header category titles that don't pop because they have no icon, no bold text, nothing. Some things are hidden behind an advanced category, which unfolds. Now, what's behind there doesn't make much sense, like how is the date and time, or, or language and inputs, or even printing an advanced setting. And if you close down that advanced header, well, you're still inside these advanced settings and they're still visible in the main settings page when you scroll. It's only closed in the sidebar. It is illegible as well, and unless you're willing to use the search feature, you will never find anything in here. And the sidebar is completely disconnected from the main content that it serves to navigate to, which is also a very, very bad UX. And then you've got the overview. It lists all your open windows. It's pretty useful. Oh, but wait, Chrome OS doesn't know what is a window or not. So no, I don't see all my windows. I see all individual apps and then a Chrome window with multiple tabs that should be separate apps. So right now I can't directly go back to my Google Sheets document because it's lumped in the Chrome window with another tab that is currently selected. Apps are also laid out using all the same size by rows, which means the space is poorly utilized and window thumbnails are smaller than they need to and thus harder to identify at a glance especially since everything is all white or all dark, so telling stuff apart is not easy. And then there are some smaller nitpicks. The calendar pop-up has a back arrow to go back, except go back where? You open that pop-up by clicking on it. Does it close the calendar? No, it takes you to the system menu, which is located to the right of the calendar. So you're clicking a left pointing arrow to move to the next element on the right. That's stupid. The search in the main menu is also weird. Typing settings, for example, doesn't prioritize the settings app, but some kind of Google search for the term settings. The shortcuts list displays stuff using a key named search that doesn't exist on non-Chromebook devices, and the list goes on. Okay, so who is the target for Chrome OS Flex exactly? Because I can't see any. As a general OS, it's broken. The way it handles apps and browser tabs makes no sense and isn't predictable, which means the most basic of interactions, which is switching between applications, is made difficult. All Linux desktops handle that much better. Windows or macOS also do. Anything else is a better choice in terms of ergonomics and UX. Now, for companies, using Chrome OS Flex is super limiting. No company can run on web apps exclusively, at least none I worked at previously. You're not going to configure a Linux developer environment for each device and install Linux apps to compensate and run them with bad performance. Because in that case, it would have been way easier to just deploy any Linux distro on your fleet of computers. And for regular users, Chrome OS Flex would only make sense if you have a device that is not a Chromebook and so either runs Windows or Mac OS. If you don't want to use these or if the latest versions are unsupported, you might consider using Chrome OS Flex. Except here as well, a Linux distro will be easier to install, have more features, better hardware support, 
more applications out of the box and a better desktop. For any general user, there is no reason to go Chrome OS Flex instead of any Linux distribution. Because all Linux distributions can install Chrome and run web apps like Chrome OS. Even better, because they will be in their separate own windows with the same level of integration in the system menu, but with more desktop applications on the side, better hardware support, more customization, and a generally better user experience. I really do not see any use case where a Chrome OS Flex would make any sense. Whether you're a company, an individual, you're in education, you already own a Chromebook, for all of these choices, Chrome OS Flex is a worse option than any Linux distro or even Windows or Mac OS. The OS is not great in terms of UX, it has pretty bad app support, it will run Linux apps, but with worse performance than a Linux distro, and you don't even get the Android app support that Chrome OS usually has. So there is basically no reason to run that thing at all. So what do you think? Have you tried Chrome OS Flex? Have you tried Chrome OS on a Chromebook? What do you think of this OS? Let me know down in the comments. And in the meantime, I'll let you know about today's sponsor, Tuxedo. Tuxedo is based in Germany and they're making Linux desktops and laptops. So they ship with Linux out of the box and they ship worldwide. And why you would want that is simply because it completely removes all the guesswork and elbow grease to try and make a laptop that's made to run Windows to run Linux. With Tuxedo, you know that the device will run Linux perfectly and contributes to help Linux's development and Linux hardware support. They have a big range of devices from Ultrabooks, Nux, gaming laptops, workstations, gaming towers, anything that you might want. And all devices are very customizable with CPU options, GPU options, SSDs. You can have your own logo on the lid. You can change the keyboard layout or even have your own keyboard layout engraved, laser etched on the keyboard of your laptop. So if you need a new device and you want it to run Linux and you want to support Linux development, click the link in the description below and get yourself a device from Tuxedo. They are really good. Now, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, well, you can always dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you want to help me make more of this stuff, there's a super thanks button underneath the video on YouTube. There's a PayPal link in the description. And there are also links to my Patreon memberships and YouTube memberships. Both get access to a weekly podcast on Mondays where I talk about Linux, open source, tech, my personal life, the channel, alternative platforms, anything goes really. And you also get to vote on the next topics that I'll cover on the channel. So if you're interested, both links are in the description below. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.